so we're going to go ahead and put in our horizon here just like that and just find some just find some leftover colors in the palette there and I quite like this little bright color I've got right here just like that well, it look brighter than that on the palette so you can always change it get some green gold I've just wet my palette bring that right across just like that there and I want to go maybe a little bit lighter on that horizon line and I'm also besides going lighter I'm going to change the tone of it change the color and you know what I'm just going to come straight across and I'm going to put in another color into there so you notice I picked some color up off of my palette and it was in the middle there so it helped me paint that leaving those sparkles there and help me paint leaving a little bit of a darker line there and lighter in the distance here so now we want to strengthen our colors and you can mix greens you can whatever you've got in your palette here and go in and it helps to work with that bead here it really does it as you're coming down you can see there's a little bit of shadow from the iPad there but you can see the pigment pooling a little bit where what's called the bead Joseph Bookvich calls it that so everybody calls it that because he's a amazing artist and uh, it's easy to understand if you call it that and so coming down here I've got some other colors coming in here they're dandelions they have a big kind of a dandelion bloom the time of year where we took this I took this photo a little bit of quinacridone gold. I wet this palette a little bit beforehand. And it's important to let this develop on its own. A little sparkle there. I'm just going to leave that there just like that. And I'm just going to drag brush with some moisture on it. Just like that. And into there. So as I work down here, I want to go to a little bit stronger colors. I'm going to go to an undersea green, believe it or not, down here. I'm going to go really strong down into this bottom part here. And I'm going to put that band right above there. Maybe one just, just like shadows in this field right about there. And I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit. I'm going to pick some of this up and run it right off the page here, just like that. Just so it's blended in there. Of course, you don't want that big spot right there but I'm going to run that this way here and then back over here I'm going to leave some sparkles into there just like that okay so now this is really the, the part that I wanted to show you here you can get I've got some yellow gouache that I can put in that's going to that diffuse nicely in there um, you want some fairly thick paint here for your splatter to get the idea of these uh, just the indication of this these uh, dandelions here and you can see that silo kind of painted itself it's not about that we're not probably gonna, not going to finish this paint anyways and we're going to splatter some of these dandelion yellow colors into here and if we want to go this is not gouache this is a yellow a Daniel Smith yellow that's just sitting in my palette here and that's I'm just getting those blooms there so this is just like splattering water on your painting so you splatter water on your painting what's going to happen is going to get the that little it's just going to grow it's just going to blend into the water or blend into the colors that are in your painting here so I'm going a little stronger now and yes I get it all over my hands and that and uh, you can wear gloves if you want I don't I just wash my hands. Anyway, so now we can add any other colors that you want to throw in there if you got, and it, the, all the brushes splatter differently too. So because this was just a certain moisture content, we just did it and the lower we went, the thicker it was, I let it dry just a little bit and that's why it's having that effect that it has. It's just developing into a really neat foreground there and these foregrounds, they Develop the best if you just let them do their thing. Quit and don't interfere with it. I'm just going to put that up here like that. Another piece of paper towel up here. 
Yep, and then you can splatter some darker darks in there. Some, I got some purple kind of color in here. Not, I like what that's doing there. So again, timing, really important. Timing is what is going to get you the rest of the detail that we're going to put in there. I'm going to get my rigger brush ready and I've got a little palette knife ready here and timing. So I'm going to put in, I'm just going to wet this and make it come to a point. And if you start pulling up these detail grasses here now, what's going to happen is it's just going to fill in. You see it's going to fill in here and, and you can see it's just disappearing. It's developing on a paper really nicely. We've got a medium textured paper here and it's, it's really doing a nice job all by itself without me interfering anymore with it. And I don't know what I got on the page here, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so the, even this color here, you see you drag this up here, much too wet to be doing this right now. So we need a little patience wait for it. You can do a little bit now and it's going to give you some variations but it's not going to give you these fine little grasses that I want to put in here. See it's giving you the little indications here and it's like oh okay that's exactly why I didn't want it, what I wanted but the problem is it's too wet. It's still moving on the page. If you put this video into a, a speeded up version which you can do in the bottom here you'll see it um, quickly change it's amazing how quickly it changes, but if you're just staring at it, looking at it, you, could, you know, it's like watching grass grow, you, you're not seeing it very quickly. So it's easier to understand if you speed, kind of speed up the video and then rewind it and play it back again. Now, well, thanks again to all the new subscribers. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. If you know somebody that wants to paint watercolor and improve their skills, please share this uh, channel. I've also got a super thanks button which is down in this corner here in certain video formats that you're watching and it's just a uh, donation button if you like uh, the content and uh, got a couple of dollars to donate to the channel go to the good cause I'm just gonna go to a good cause it's just uh, gonna go towards uh, improving studio equipment so thank you very much for that so there, I've just put in some titanium white in there as I was waiting for this to dry. So I'm, it, the other thing is using a palette knife is a great way to get some more detail into here like that. And you could just look, try it and see if it closes right in. And it's giving us a white highlight there. You can see here it's closing in, closing in, closing in. It's almost going to disappear. So two things you can do, wait, or you can take more pigment out just like that and then it'll close in just like that and uh, it'll close in to the size of the you know the grasses that you want over there. Oh, I've got some green already mixed up that'll actually work quite nicely for this area here. Lighten it up a little bit by just adding some water and I'm just going to quickly get the photo out of the way. I'm in like that there and I'm gonna leave this all the little highlights in here for now and see what happens leave it wet and I've got a few little grasses over here that we can paint yeah and it comes down from here like this into here, I've got some here, we've got kind of these little bushes growing into the fields here, come in here I'm just going to blend that in like that, put some of these kind of dry grasses into here. And the paint got a little darker there. I'm just going to leave that. It kind of looks uh, interesting. Get rid of some of these sparkles because it's just sometimes it's just too much. And come across here like that. 
Um, there's kind of a sagey color in these bushes here, and I'm gonna have to mix that up. And there's a few little rocks and things here. Get a little bit stronger in our color as we come across into here. And I want to leave this wet for the effect that I'm going to do in a few minutes here. I'm going to put all these little kind of bushes in here. And you can see, I can see out of the corner of my eye, the roof just starting, the light starting to come out in here. But it's really not going to start out, or the light's really not going to pop until we get some uh, darker darks into different areas of this painting here. And then down here, I've got a bit of... of color showing through into here and there and we had some kind of rocks and interesting bits in here. I'm not staying too true to the colors. There's some kind of grayish business going on there. And I'm going to put in just a little bit more strong. This is burgundy yellow ochre that I'm putting in here. Some of these areas in here. And I don't use white a lot, but to get some of these tones here, these sagey kind of tones that are going to be in here, I'm just going to add some to start with here. And then I'm going to mix right on the paper here. Bring that across like that. It's pretty light in here. Just the way the light is picked up. Um, picked up. I mean, uh, the light reflected by these uh, little bushes and things here. There. And that'll do in here. Well, I'm going to get some more green. I'm going to. I'd like to splatter a mint, but I know I'm going to make a mess here. You can kind of go here. I'm just going to go right across like that. Cut around that a little bit. And then this is really dark into here, so we'll get some of our undersea green going here. This farm is actually right on the, pretty much right on the ocean. It is there's on to the right here. There's a river that comes down into the ocean that gets higher and lower with the tides that come in and out. And uh, and there's a marina at the end of the road behind uh, behind me. <laughs> if you understand what that means. And I've got some kind of grayer colors in here and I'm gonna switch to a little bit smaller brush and see if I can get those into these areas here where these rocks are and before this foreground I'm thinking about this foreground and how dry it is already here I'm gonna see how receptive it's gonna be to splashing some more colors into there and it's green, quite dark green, but... I'm going to throw some kind of interesting colors into here. A little darker, kind of a purpley business going on there, so... I can... Uh, let's just make a little highlight. A couple of little features there. I like that. We'll get rid of our the light down here because we don't want that catching your eye too much. And we put in some of this brown. Some different spots into here. And then what I'm going to do is splatter just a bit of water. I 
and it makes a neat effect and I was waiting for this to get in drier before I did that and it's just about right now oh you guys saw that I didn't be a big tree there now so I'm gonna leave that there and before this dries too much more I'm gonna grab a rigger brush and you've seen me do this before if you watch some of my other videos I'm just gonna load it up with the pigment that's on there enough of that one and then I'm gonna go with some darker green I did get to uh, squeeze out some zoocyte genuine which is another dark green here and I can use for some of these little bushes here and we get some of these areas are really really dark in the photo and it helps bring the light out so I'm gonna paint in some of that in different areas but your eye your eye wants to go to that barn so it's going to be it'll take a lot to if you paint some features down here to take your eye away from that barn as long as it comes back over there you're all good like that there all right so we're going to work on this green field in here we're going to start over here and it's a little bit darker. This is kind of a slope coming up here, so it's lit up a little bit more by the uh, sunrise. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the brush here and put that in. And there's a little light right between. There's two, actually two rows of fence posts there. I put one in. Like that there. And it's important now, you put the one, made the one brush stroke just leave that one brush stroke let it paint itself and then there's a little bit of a lighter area here and then I'm gonna come around like this and that's it for, I'm just gonna put this brush down for a second here and we'll go with this one here I'm just going to paint this area into here. There's a little bit of brown and blend it into there. This is burgundy yellow ochre. And I'm going to blend this into here just like that and run that right off of there like that. That's all I'm going to do there, I believe. And then just above it is kind of this road and grayish color so I've just got a little bit of blue here and this is going to blend in with that you're barely going to see it just like that there and I'm going to leave that little highlight there you see I was talking about the paper buckling that's what it's doing there but you know because it's not hurting anything in that particular area it's just fine okay so the next part is over here I've got a little water drop here and you really should just leave it because if you pick it up it's going to pick up pigment so that's what I'm going to do just leave it I almost blotted it out but I know it's going to make a white dot if I do that so so I didn't all right now the left part here I'll show you the picture again here uh, it's a little bit lighter than this part that we just painted in here and yeah, so I'm gonna go in there I'm gonna mix up some of that color there it's kind of a little bit of green I'm just gonna get some titanium white and mix that in with this green over here so the thing is you got to mix a lot of pigment you don't want to be short of pigment and you go oh that's the color that I need and then you put it on the paper and then you get you get kind of stuck because you need more of it and then you got to mix some more while that's drying if you don't want it to dry particularly 
before you put in the next layer in here. I'm going to go up here into this area and I can actually kind of paint that first here. This is going to create a bead and this is going to be a lot darker right here. There's this little part if you look at the painting or look at the photo again and I'm going to blend that in there just like that and this this brush is loaded up quite well with pigment. I'm just going to I'm thinking of doing a stroke right here and then dry brushing above it, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to come down that way there. And it comes down to here and then it transitions into brown. A lot of thought involved in this. There, I've got a few sparkles in there from the morning sun. Like that there. And then a little darker highlight in there. A little few into here. Let it kind of paint itself. I'm gonna just warm that up a little bit right here. Just on the bank and into here. A little quinacridone burnt orange mixed up with. pretty strong in there so I'm going to come in there and lighten that up just a little bit so where you leave where the little sparkles are you can um, you can leave those and put some darks in below them and uh, make some detail there, that's going pretty good there, and we're going to come across here at this little spot there. I just wanted to gray that off just a little bit there where that transition is. And this looks a little bit, I'm going to come in here just like that. Now I'm going to think of how I'm going to make a little bit of texture here, and there's a lot of ways you can do it. But I want to get the color correct first and you know you can you can splatter but I don't want anything in that water just to bring this around here again like that and and the water's edge so right here there's a bunch of grasses that are growing and just like that I'm going to go in and start working on this texture a little bit and texture into here and put a towel over top of this section I can't really do it right now so I'm just going to have to do it like this And yeah, I got away with it. No splatters in my water. Perfect. So I'm going to to here. We've got some darks. And undersea green is what I put into there. I just painted and loaded up the brush with it a little bit of. And green gold is next here. I did squeeze out some fresh pigment. Into it there, and I'm going to come across right up into here to start working on my bank. some of this green gold here just like that and I'm going to grab my rigger I think and start working on these little grasses and just blend that up like that this rigger brush is dry so you can it's the bristles are separating so it's kind of making like a grass effect on here like that there and on the edges 
And then, so what we're going to want to do next, we've got a little bit of, some, we got some nice stuff going on there. Just, if you just spray clean water on this at the right time, which is now, it's just going to make these little water marks, these little water effects on there. And you can't do too much. That's about it there. And just wait for it to happen. And it's kind of painting itself there, which is nice. Um, I'm going to go in here with some more darker grasses in here while I got my water spots in there. And paint that in just like that. There. And you don't want to overdo this either. You can leave these little white marks in here for now and just decide if you want to close them up later or leave them as sparkles. But some of them that don't look right, you can go in right away. And now I want to get some a little bit of sparkle into here too. Or a little bit of a splatter effect there. And if you do, if you do a little bit too much, I'm just going to on purpose smudge these a little bit to soften them. There, it gives you a nice effect. And on the edge of this, I'm going to see how wet this is, just for the little bit of a palette knife effect. And I'm not going to do much. I'm just going to do even less than normal into there. And I'm leaving that and quite liking what it's doing there. here I'm just gonna wet this wet this water the water I'm painting I mean <laughs> makes a lot more sense and there's little spots where you can see the water there through the the grass so I'm just using the back end of this rigger here I'm gonna go up like this bit of detail into here. It's still too wet to do that with there. And I'm liking how this is working out. I'm just letting it paint itself and it's it's doing a great job. The less I interfere sometimes the better off it looks. So I've still got no water spot in there. It's not dry yet. So there we go. There we go. Just like that there. Okay, now so we got these water reflections to deal with here. Um, I've got posts, and they're going to be dark and dark into the water too. And I have actually there's some cattails there. You can paint those in or or, or not. You can just pick up some some uh, pigment here and maybe paint a few of them in. But I might they might just disappear. I'm looking at the tip of this brush and it's. A little bit too wet, so you can dry it off on the sponge or on your towel, and just see how wet. This is a little bit too much there, but best thing is just leave it. It'll look fine. And and if you want the tops of your cattails, you can just make some little dark spots. That's a time where it's best to be sitting and painting because this is it's hard to do here doing this like that just a little bit of detail you don't need a whole lot and that's about all I'm gonna put in there now for these water reflections I'm gonna keep this rigger close by here and I'm gonna drop in some of these greens going to mix up actually this color right here maybe a little bit greener green it up a little bit more like that there load up this brush and it starts it kind of start into here lightly but I'm going to start down here where the I got the most pigment and then once the brush starts losing its pigment I'm going to go up to the areas that are higher up here just making this bank here, just like that. 
And there's a few ways you can do this as well. Go a little bit darker into here. Under sea green. And I'm making little puddles of paint here on purpose. And so what I'm going to do next is put in a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange in with it here. And a little bit of green gold. Green gold tends to separate colors too. If you've dropped it in, you can do an experiment, but if you drop it in with other colors, sometimes it separates the colors, which is interesting, an interesting effect. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to wet this just below the area, preferably with a clean brush. It's not going to hurt anything what I just did there, but, and I'm just going to give it some little bl reflection blooms by doing that here. They're not really blooms, they're just kind of flowing on the paper, just like that. And I'm going to drag it down into my reflections here, or to make reflections with the pooled pigment. That's why I was pooling the pigment in those areas there. And it comes down a little bit further here, so I've noticed that. So I'm just going to drop in some extra pigment into here, and it's going to kind of frame in what I've done here. You drop the pigment into what you've dragged into your reflections here, it'll actually follow and fill them in a little bit more too. It's an interesting effect. Yeah, just some light marks in this water here. I don't know if this pond is deep enough for swimming, but I don't think I'd be drinking the water too much. <laughs> Out of here. And you don't need, you just, there's a point where you, you overdo these, and uh, that's quite enough there. So I'm going to drag some reflections a little bit too wet into here and drag some more down into and they go quite, they almost go right across this pond here, these, so I'm going to full caution to the wind and change the color a little bit and get some, get some going up to, makes a lot of sense if you get reflections of something here like that. A little color in here, some color reflections. A little bare spot there. And just spots of water, just to break up. They've got a bit of a hard edge there, hard line. Can't quite see that there. Like that there. I'm going to back up and, and just have a look at this. And now I'm going to work at this front edge and do a similar thing here. I'm going to just pull some pigment down into there and I'm going to go darker down into here. Just in spots, not everywhere. You don't want to kill your light. You want to create light with your darks. I'm going to do a little bit more here in this corner afterwards, but not with this color. Pull a little bit right there. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that. Yeah, I'm gonna go dark right there, and it's gonna kind of it kind of frames in that area and brings it back over this way. So uh, a little bit darker in some of these spots here on the opposite side. Looking good right about there.